Okay, in this video I want to show you how you can use an isomorphism nicely um, with the change of basis problem. So, suppose we were considering the polynomials of the form a0 plus a1t. And we had two bases for these polynomials, let's say b, which were basis vectors were t plus 1 and t plus 2. I'll put parentheses around that just so we can see it. And then we had a second basis for this um, set of vectors, or this vector space, which were made up of 1 and t. All right. I'll put a semicolon there. And a the semicolon just means that it's an ordered basis, so the order is important. So I'm looking for an isomorphism because I want to rewrite these basis vectors in terms of vectors in Rn, in this particular case R2. So suppose I had an isomorphism that what it did is it took any vector of the form a0 plus a1t, here's a polynomial, and what it did is it peeled off its coefficients and put them in a vector in R2. So let's say I took the coefficient of t, made that the first component a1, and the coefficient, um, the constant term, a0. Right. So if I give it some um, polynomial, linear polynomial, a0 plus a1t, it gives me back the vector in R2, a1, a0. All right, so let me rewrite my basis vectors then in terms of R2. So b would then be, well, I'll take the coefficient of the t, which is 1, and the constant term 1, so that's the first basis vector. And the second basis vector would be the coefficient of t, which is 1, and then the constant term 2. So there is my basis now written in terms of R2, and do the same thing for the basis C. So the coefficient for T in the first basis vector is 0, and the constant term is 1. So there's my first basis vector for C. And then in the second basis vector, the isomorphism would give me 1 and 0, because the coefficient of T is 1, and there is no constant term. All right, so we recall that finding the transition matrix from B to C comes from solving the augmented system that has on the left the um, basis vectors for C, which is 0, 1, and 1, 0, and on the right the basis vectors for B, which are 1, 1, and 1, 2. Please remember that you have to put these in order, so these vectors have to be in that order for the basis vectors in C. And these must be in this order. These are the basis vectors for B. Otherwise, you'll mix everything up and you'll get the wrong transition matrix. So remember that these bases are ordered, and the first one is first, and the second one is second. All right, so solving this, we see that the left-hand side of the augment is almost the same as the identity matrix. So I'm just going to swap row 1 and row 2. That should give me my solution. If I do that, I'm going to get that P transition matrix from B to C should come from 1, 0, 1, 2, and 0, 1, 1, 1. And of course, we see directly that our solution then would be P that takes us from B to C. Take a peek at that. That's going to be 1, 2, and 1, 1. So here's our transition matrix. So Suppose then that I knew um, a vector written in terms of b. So we're adding to the problem here. And let's say that vector was 2, 3. Now, that's written in terms of the um, vector in R2. If I were to write that as a polynomial, right, so the isomorphism goes forward and back, so the polynomial then would look like, well, it has coordinates 2 for the first basis vector, which was t plus 1 and 3 for the second basis vector, which was t plus 2. So we have the coordinates multiplying their correct basis vectors. And then, of course, we want to know what that polynomial actually looked like. Then we can just multiply out and collect terms. So the polynomial really is p of t is equal to, there's 2t plus 3t, so that's 5t plus 2 plus 6 is 8. And so just for emphasis, I know that when you multiply it out, you're going to get exactly what I got there. But up here, that was really the way you write it in terms of B. 
Okay, so what if we wanted to now find out how you would write this vector, which is 5t plus 8, right, in terms of the basis vectors in C? So we're going to use that transition matrix that we have there, and we know that if we take P, the transition matrix that takes us from B to C, multiply it by any vector written in terms of the basis vectors in B, then it should give me as output the vector or the coordinates for the basis C. So let's do that. So this would then give me the matrix transition matrix 1, 2, 1, 1. I'm going to multiply that by 2, 3. This is the vector written in terms of B. And when I do that, I'm going to get 2 plus 6, which is 8. And I'm going to get 2 plus 3, which is 5. So these are the coordinates for the vector written in terms of C, namely 8 and 5. Now, what were the vectors in C? Let's see if we can remember that. Um, the first vector was, um, I think that one was uh, 0, 1. And the second vector was 1, 0. Now, if I write that C in terms of the polynomials, I think that polynomial before we did the um, isomorphism took advantage of the fact that it was isomorphic to R2 looked like, um, let me just double check, make sure I've written it correctly, that was 1 and T. All right, so the coordinates tell me that the polynomial then written in terms of C, I'm just going to put that there for emphasis, should look like 8 times the first basis vector, so that's 8 times 1, plus 5 times the second basis vector, which is 5 times t, and voila, we do get 5t plus 8. So we found the coordinates for our vector in question written in terms of c by using the transition matrix p that takes b to c.